Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make funky, groovy, deep minimal house in the style of Susco, the new stuff that Chris Susi and Yoko have been putting out together. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video is available at the top of the description for just $5, and if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there because it's already available, and yeah. Let's dive in. So we got the project file here. This is what you heard in the intro. We're at 127 BPM. And the first sound that we have here is this chord stab, which sounds like this. So this is actually really simple. You can see it's literally just playing here. This is kind of playing off of what the piano stab underneath it is playing. You can hear if we play them together, they're grooving together, and yeah, that's the idea with this layer. Like, this layer, there's not even any effects on it, it's just a little background kind of thing like that. But it's all about how it's playing together with the other elements, like how this piano stab, and then I'll play it with the bass line, too. You have to keep in mind, you're hearing all that groove between those elements underneath everything when you're hearing the track. So that's really what this is adding, is just a lot of groove that is going to fit with the other elements while still being in key, of course. Then after that, we have the piano stab, which sounds like this. So you can see it's actually pretty simple MIDI. Basically what's happening here is we have three main chords. We have C sharp major seven. We have G sharp major seven, or minor seven, excuse me. Those first two chords are minor seven. And then we have an A major seven. So this is actually just kind of following, like if you listen to it with the bass line. It's just following what the bass line's doing. But yeah, so this is just kind of like, you know, some simple groovy stuff. It's not as much about the chords as it is just about, like, the way that this fits in. Being both a melodic element and a more percussive sort of rhythmic thing. And something else that you'll notice too is in the break over here, this doesn't play in the break. We have that first chord stab play in the break. But then this one only comes when the actual main part comes. So just kind of like something to keep in mind dynamics wise now and arrangement wise as well. Now from the sound on this one, I'm using this hard piano here. This is essentially just like a Wurlitzer type of sound. That's typically the types of sounds you want to choose here. Either like a Wurlitzer or a Rhodes sort of like, you know, electronic piano sound. And there's a ton of emulators out there for those as well as just these Ableton sounds. Then we just have a bit of chorus on that, a bit of drum bus to make it a bit fatter, and then a high pass filter to sort of finish it off. And that's it for the piano stab. Then we have this Wurlitzer solo, which sounds like this. So, something you can see with this is it's very free, it's kind of, I don't want to say it's all over the place, but what it's doing is we're just working with one scale here. In this case, it would be a C sharp, or excuse me, an F sharp minor scale, because you can see like we're doing... Like it's, these are all voices that are just pretty straightforward inside of the F sharp minor scale. You know, we have like F sharp, which would be the root note. G sharp, which would be the ninth, A, which is the minor third, C sharp is the fifth, and then we're just going back down to those notes. This E here would just be the minor seventh. So it's like, it's all actually pretty straightforward if you look at it. The key here is just choosing a few notes like this, and then we're just playing them across different octaves and like just getting really creative with it. Like, for example, here, you know, we could have maybe done. But you hear how it's just a lot more effective if we just walk down the notes that you've already heard in the first part. You know, so it's like, it's actually pretty simple stuff. And then what it just really comes down to is just like how you use a few notes and how you can really make them work, even over here. 
that's just walking down the scale. Like, it's not really that crazy as... It, like, it sounds crazy, but it would probably be a lot crazier to, like, try to play this thing live. Like, if you got some jazz skills, you can do that. Play some stuff like that, maybe, but yeah, I just think that, like... If you sort of pick your scale and stick to it, you know, it's just about writing something interesting and creative that's gonna fit over top of the groove really nicely. And then I'll also show you, so in the break here, this is actually the same MIDI as this main part. I'm just taking out some of the notes, like you'll notice this one is... Like, it's, it's all the same stuff, I'm just taking out some of the extra parts so it's a little bit more open in the break, and then we get to this main drop here. It's really just like grooving. And so for the sound, this is actually the same sound as the piano stab. I wanted to put these on the same track, like have one track playing the same MIDI. The reason why I didn't do that is just because this one, the solo you can see, has this echo on here. So the echo goes a really long way. In terms of giving it that sort of like, you know, vintage, exciting, like... Sort of feel like this, because you can hear it, it's giving it a lot of vibe when you're just hearing that like, repeating over top, especially like with this part. You know, it really makes it feel like an old like, funk or soul album sample or something like that. And then after that we just have a bit of drum bust which goes even further for like fattening this up and giving it that more sort of old school feel. And that is it for the Wurlitzer solo. Then we have this brake pad. So here is the MIDI for this. All it's playing is the C sharp minor seven chord and then we added a C sharp voice on top. So if you look at this, we have a regular C sharp minor chord. Just root note, minor third and fifth. And then we add this minor seventh on top. Which if you look, the minor seventh is just two notes down, two semitones I should say, from the root note. And then you just put it up an octave. And then I have another C sharp at the top. So just kind of like a more vibey chord, you know, it's not just going to be like a basic minor chord, but it's going to have a bit more life to it. And then from the sound with this one, it's a pretty simple pad with analog. So you can see we just have two saw waves. The f first one is detuned a little, and then those are just going into a low pass, which you can see the low pass is automating, so it kind of goes up. And then it goes down, so it chills out, you hear the other sounds a little bit more, and then it builds. And this is one of the things, it's like, in this style, you're not just going to have, like, a riser or even, like, that much effects in the track in general. So, you can do a lot with just, like, you know, using that filter sweep to build tension or having, like, and then having it drop out. Rather than just having, like, you know, a bunch of effect sweeps in the background, you're doing it with the elements in the track. And one other thing you'll see is I've got a bit of an LFO on here, so if you look at this, yeah, you can see the LFO is just kind of slowly giving it that vroom, vroom kind of thing while the filter is being moved up. And then we get the amp envelope like that. I've got this unison here, so you can see just kind of gives it even more of like the big chorusy sort of pad sound. Then, speaking of which, we just have a bit of chorus and some reverb. These are both giving it a bit of space and stereo width, and also just makes it rings out a little bit more. Like when that stops there, you don't want it to just completely disappear, so the reverb really helps with that. And then finally, we just have some drum bus to make this really big and full. And that's it for the brake pad. Then we have the kick. And so, this one's pretty straightforward. I think the main thing to keep in mind with this style is just like the type of kick you're using. You know, you want to start with something that's like this very 909 style kick. It's not fully a 909. There's a little bit more to it, which just comes with like layering samples together and using saturation and stuff like that. But it's really like at the end of the day, just based on like a nice boomy 909 kick. So we got that in there, and then I just have it going through a bit of saturation to make it a bit fatter. And then we have the bass line. So 
So here it is, the type of bass line like you would typically use in this track, you know. I think something that really sets these guys' tracks apart is the way that the bass line is like walking up and down the scale, you know, it's very... It's almost got like a chord progression to it, where typically in this style, you know, your bass line might only be two notes, and it doesn't really have a chord progression. It's a lot more rhythmic. But by still paying a lot of attention to the rhythm, because obviously you can see this is a very groovy and bouncy bass line, but then also adding that sort of melodic like chord progression element to it, it really does a lot for the track. And this whole thing is really what's like carrying the track. Because you're getting this bouncy bass line that's playing a chord progression, while all this stuff is really just kind of sitting in the same place. Like obviously that piano stab is doing the chord progression, but really the bass line is the main thing that's holding that all down. So for the sound with this one, it's a really simple bass pluck. All it is is just two saw waves, a bit of a low pass, which the main thing about this one is just the way you set the envelope on the low pass. So you can see we have it set like that. And then you want like a really fast decay because you really want it to be like... You know, like that. Well, just like a really quick bass stab. I've also got a bit of key tracking on here, so basically the way that works is it's just like the higher you play on the keyboard, the more open the filter is going to be. So this works well with this bass line. Because you can hear it kind of opens a bit on those higher notes, and then when it goes lower, it gets a bit deeper. And then we just have the amp envelope set like that. Then I just have a bit of saturation. You can see, yeah, that's actually doing quite a bit. You know, it really fattens this up to really make it like hit properly and really powerful in the mix. Then we just have an EQ cutting out a bit of space for the kick and boosting the lows. And then I just have a compressor side chaining this a little bit to the kick. And then on the groove of the low end, so we just have the kick and bass in a groove together with a bit of saturation to kind of like even it out. This, uh, this helps to organize the project file and also it's just going to help to blend them together a little bit and make your low end a lot more cohesive. Here's without this. And then with it. So obviously it is a little bit louder with it, but what you hear is that without it, it's a lot more like... They're kind of just like a kick and a bass playing side by side. With it, it's really cohesive because some of those harmonics are getting filled in. And each layer is kind of going together a bit more. And then we have these filters here, so these just come on in the break. Just high passing it and low passing it a bit so that we're still getting those in the break you know without having that full bass line so then when we get here that low end's really really powerful so it's like these are some of the little subtle things you can do to really make your track hit you know again it's not always just having like a big riser and a filter sweep and like all the stuff in the background or a filter sweeping noise in the background but even just like the way that you cut out the low end in the bass and then drop it when the drop comes can be a really powerful arrangement tool then we have the percussion so it really just comes down to like these three sort of background layers this bongo this percussion, and then this little snare. And then we have a clap. So the main thing here is just like the types of sounds you're choosing, you know, it's all very quick and punchy percussion, and also just the way it all grooves together, you know, because the idea here is that, you know, you can't just have like one or two layers. You need to have these full, this full thing happening where all three layers plus the clap are talking to each other. Like, that's a whole groove on its own that you're hearing just like... Like, you're hearing that this whole time while hearing all this other stuff grooving. So it's important to make sure you use enough elements. And you'll notice also the snare doesn't come in until after the break. Which is, again, just like a subtle little arrangement tool so that then when you do hear that snare, you notice that there's something a little bit stronger happening. And then on the group of all that stuff, we just actually have a little bit of drum bus. So here would be, without that, I'll turn it up. 
and then with it. So you can hear why we put this on because not only does it make these hit a lot more and make them a lot punchier, but it also makes the texture of the percussion a bit more even. You know, a lot of times people ask like, how do you choose samples that are all just going to magically fit together? And the truth is, it's not about choosing samples that magically fit together sonically. It's about making them fit together sonically. So that's what this does. You know, it puts an even texture across all the percussion. Then we have these hi-hats. So you can hear, it's pretty straightforward, we have like this 909, which you can see I've shortened quite a bit, I've got some reverb on that, then we have this closed hi-hat, which is also playing on the upbeats, and you can see in the break, that's the one that plays, and then when we get here, then we save that big 909 hi-hat for the drop, again, more of the like, tension building and having everything fit together, then we just have sort of like the background ones, which would be this closed hi-hat, And then the shaker loop. And the shaker loop's really good because it gives you something more organic, you know, so that it's not all just, like, programmed, you know, straight-up percussion. We have something live and organic in there. And also just have that side chain a little bit to the kick to make it fit into the groove. And then on the groove of hi-hats, so we actually just have a bit of saturation and some EQ. You can ignore those other things that were there. So here is, without anything... And then with it, you can hear, with this, all the hi-hats get an even place in the mix, and they all hit evenly, as well as they all just have a more even texture. And this EQ here is just to get rid of the low end, make sure it's not going to get in the way of the kick and bass or anything with some of those frequencies that you wouldn't even need in the hi-hats. And then it just boosts the highs a little bit. And the last thing down here is the snare. So this is just, it's actually that same snare that you saw inside of the percussion group, but this is just giving you that little kind of funky little fill right before the drop. So yeah, I love doing these. The key here is just to not make it do too much. It would be very easy to do like a whole like one bar long fill, but to just have that little that's all you need, and then it hit, makes the drop just hit that much more, because we get like... And yeah, so, that is it for the snare, and that is also going to be it for this video, guys. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like this video as well as subscribe, and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video. It's available right at the top of the description. It's a really great way to support me. If you guys are enjoying these videos, guys, I definitely recommend you check that out. You get a great project file, a bunch of samples, and MIDI and presets to work with. And it supports me and helps me keep going so I can keep making you guys these videos every day. And yeah, that is it for this one, guys. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.